Hey, what's going on YouTube? Will here from All Electric back again with another video, and I got a software update for my Model 3 2019.36.2.1. But I did not get a software update for the Model X because the Model X was sold. At the end of this video, I'm gonna give you all the details related to that sale, but for right now, we are a one car family with one Model 3 hardware, autopilot hardware 2.5, and this sweet bike with two kid seats. Okay, just kidding. Let's get to the software update. What we got in this software update is stopping mode, which we're gonna go over in detail later in this video, right after we look at the release notes. Scheduled departure, which now is perfect timing for winter. So if you plug your car in at night, now you can set the departure. So like the car is gonna be ready when you are. Power increase, thanks so much, Elon. Now Model 3s are 5% faster, which is pretty awesome. And I definitely have some evidence of that. Uh, it's very noticeable. And automatic navigation. So pretty sweet update here. So let's jump right in. So if we click on navigation, then automatic navigation was automatically selected. So I guess they want you to use that, but nothing too fancy here. If your car's location is at home, then the navigate is going to take you to work, assuming that you're actually going to work. So now the stopping mode. So we've seen creep and roll has been renamed to roll now. And now we have another option, hold. So it's actually gonna bring the car all the way down to zero. And I'm gonna go over and drive and I'll show you guys that in a little bit. So if we click on the charging icon and we are gonna now schedule by tapping schedule and it's gonna bring up this menu. So right now it's off and we can set the charge at a time. So we can, uh, if we have like, you know, certain rates for certain times or depart at a certain time. So if you always leave the house, let's say at like 8 a.m., then you can set that to 8 a.m. So for example, let's set it to, let's say 8.45 all week, we want it to be ready to go. So it's gonna warm up the car and so the battery's gonna be warmed so that you get the same regen that you expect versus when a car sits overnight and the battery is a little bit colder. This scheduled departure is gonna come in really handy during the winter time. So now I have the car set to hold or where the car is gonna come and do that real one pedal driving. So you can see here in this clip that my foot does not press on the brake and the car comes to a complete stop. So no brake pressing whatsoever. As you can see, my foot is only on the accelerator pedal and I just lift up completely and the car will come to a complete stop. Very convenient. I will admit that I'm not used to it. So in a parking lot, and reversing out of my garage or something like that is gonna take a little bit to get used to just because of how different it is uh, versus just kind of full or standard regen, which I used to drive on. So when we go in here to reverse, it's almost like I still didn't put my foot on the brake because a car came to a stop before I shifted in reverse, which again, is pretty convenient. And I think as I drive with this more, you know, and now once I'm recording this video, I've driven with it for let's say at least an hour and it's really convenient and it's just a nice way to drive. So you can see here I bring my foot off all the way and the car comes to a complete stop. Not pushing the accelerator or the brake pedal and just using that hold and the car is able to come to a complete stop for me at this red light. Which is you know what you expect and I will say Nissan Leafs has had this for many years. When I test drove a Nissan Leaf a long time ago, it had this feature. Okay, let's switch gears. So I did have some time to test the autopilot in this new software version, which is pretty rare. Typically, I try to get this software update video out as soon as possible, although it appears I'm late to the party by about a week with this software update video, so I thought I would do some autopilot testing with this as well. One thing that I wanna note is that the car comes to such a smooth stop. That feathering of you know, the car stopping in front of you and like where, when to slow down and all that, I don't feel that the car is slamming on its brakes when a car is stopped like further in front of you. So that is a huge improvement that we haven't seen before and I did mention that in some of my previous videos where the car would come up to a stopped car at a stoplight and just slam on the brakes. So definitely a huge improvement and I don't want to overlook that with this newest software update. So through my driving today, I do have some examples. You can see the car in front of me is slowing down and the 
autopilot now does a really good job of kind of uh, managing that distance, whereas before I feel like it either slowed down too soon or slowed down pretty um, pretty quickly at the end. So there again, you can see traffic slowing in front of me and the autopilot system is able to manage that distance appropriately and it, it didn't feel jerky to me at all. Sitting in the car, it didn't feel unnatural. It felt more like a human driver kind of feathering uh, that distance in between the car in front of me. And one last instance of traffic slowing down pretty abruptly and the autopilot does a great job kind of feathering that without slamming on the brakes. So I wanna slow down for one second here and rewind a little bit and go back to where you saw the pedestrian walk in front of the vehicle. Now take a look, the autopilot is actually going to render the pedestrian a darker color, meaning that the autopilot's following the pedestrian, which is really cool and huge for safety. I mean. That's basically meaning that the autopilot's gonna follow that pedestrian and it recognizes that that person is there. So really cool that autopilot system is so advanced and it's able to do that. Now, lane changes, I would say, are about on par with the last update. I did a couple um, in my testing today with the newest software version and I would say that they are still just as smooth as ever, like butter, so no, negative change here with the newest software update. So I did initiate a lane change here and you can see that this car is gonna pass me before the autopilot takes over just what we would expect, even with the lane coming up here. Now I still see the driver visualization, it sees two buses for a second there, so there's still some work to be done with that. So much like previous software updates, I am able to turn on my turn signal and the car does recognize that turn lane relatively quickly and is able to get over there um, in a reasonable amount of time. I would like to see it increase in speed a little bit. I'm not sure if this is something that the autopilot team is working on, but it is able to transition over into that turn lane. Now, I would like to be in the left lane here, but since there is no car, I wanna see if the autopilot is able to make this left-hand turn. So we do have lane markings and we are gonna see, of course my hands are grasped firmly to the wheel and it looks like I have to take over about mid-turn. It's not able to quite turn that edge. And again, Autopilot's not designed for this yet, but I cannot wait to see these features kind of come in. Now Model 3s did get a 5% peak power increase and I would say that it's definitely noticeable when you're driving the car. I'm not sure if this video does it justice, but I mean, not flooring it here, but just have a lot more confidence and power. And I have the slower mid-range Model 3 and definitely very noticeable. So Autopilot overall with this software update is improving. Now I have hardware version 2.5 Autopilot hardware, but we'll soon get updated to hardware version 3. So you did hear me correctly at the beginning of this video, we did sell our Model X and we sold it to actually one of the subscribers. It was so awesome to meet one of my subscribers, Matt. It was so much fun to talk with Matt about Tesla and it was so cool how he's seen the Model X in previous videos. Now, as much as we hate to see this car go, <laughs> we had a commute change and my wife was only gonna have street parking, so a Model 3 is a little bit easier to park on the street compared to the bigger Model X. Now before you sell your Tesla, or if you're thinking about selling your Tesla and getting this sweet bike like I have, of course I'm kidding, we're getting another Tesla. There's a couple of things that you need to do. First, I thought you sent an email to Tesla, but that is not the case anymore. You get this response back telling you to go log into your Tesla account. So what I did first was I factory reset the Tesla. And if you guys wanna see a video on that, leave a comment down below, but it's pretty simple. You hit the car icon, hit service, and then there's a factory reset button where you have to enter in your uh, My Tesla account credentials. So you do that before you sell the car, and it actually reset, and the Model X thought that the car was in California, which is pretty funny. So once you factory reset the car, then you log in either to a computer or a phone and click view details and then remove car from my account. Then you say your last goodbyes to your car and you get an email and you have to click that email and then you get another email saying confirming that the car has been removed. Once you sign out of your account and then sign back in, then the car will be out of your account. 
it looks like Tesla is trying to streamline this process as they get more people because when we bought our used Model 3, all of this adding and removing cars was done just by shooting an email over to Tesla. Now, you want to buy a used Model 3, or at least that's what we're doing, but I don't necessarily want to buy this one. And I don't want to go talk to this guy at a used car lot and he's gonna sit there and tell me about all the features. So I decided to go through Carvana. Now this is not sponsored by Carvana. We haven't gotten our car yet. Look for a future update video to that. But I wanted to touch on when you do buy a used Model 3 from a third party or private party, you have to go into your account and click on account and then scroll all the way down to the bottom under ownership and you can add your Tesla right from there. Before buying the car through Carvana, I did want to reach out to Tesla Service and see if the warranty was going to be void. I did hear that. Now, as long as the dealership did not register it under the dealership's name and it kind of skipped registration like Carvana does, then you should be completely fine. Of course, before you buy another used car, do your homework and utilize your service center to get the most up-to-date information that you can. I want to give a huge shout out to our man of men, Akarama Tool and Nicola Pro for supporting this channel over on Patreon. Click the link down below to support this channel. Thank you guys so much. Please share this video with a friend. If you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next one.